Hello, this is another in my series of videos about extending the functionality of continuous forms and today I'm going to tell you about how you can add the ability to freeze columns so that they stay in position when you scroll or tab the form horizontally. Very useful if you've got a large number of columns. Whilst that's available natively in datasheet forms, in order to add it to continuous forms we need to use code. There is a three page series of articles for this particular topic and I recommend you read them in turn. The application I'm going to show you today is the third of those articles, Freeze Columns Continuous Form 3, but I do suggest you look at the first two pages before you study this in detail. It would be easier to understand if you do that. Let's first of all explain the functionality that you natively have in datasheet forms. If you've got a large number of columns, far too wide to fit on your screen, there's several things you can do to manage those at runtime. You can move or resize columns so you can focus on the columns that you want to and make them the width that you need them to be. You can hide individual columns and then restore them later. And as already mentioned, we can freeze and unfreeze columns so they stay fixed in position when scrolling. Of those three sets of items, the last two are available from the right-click context menu that you get when you click on any individual control. And the first of those is available for when you use the mouse and drag on the column headers. I'll show you that in a few seconds. None of those, as already mentioned, are available in a continuous form, but we can add them. In a continuous form then, I'm going to try and show you how we can get the same functionality. So the idea is then we want to use code to freeze and optionally lock against editing, something you can't do in a data sheet, a specified number of columns. All other columns will then be moved automatically when you use the horizontal scroll bar, but not the ones you've frozen. Navigation is also possible using tab and shift and tab keys. Arrow keys also work. And in each case, the frozen columns are ignored in terms of movement across the screen. Columns can also be sorted and filtered, but that's not the main point of today's video. That's what my continuous form version of the form looks like, and time we demonstrated that. Now I've got both forms open initially in order to compare them. So as I've already mentioned then, you can, by clicking on the header there, you can change the width, of any of those columns. You can also move a column to a new position and you can also do that with several columns at the same time if you wish to do so. Let's move those back again. As well as then using that to move and resize we can right click, we can hide those fields. Having hidden those I've changed my mind here so I'm going to Click on another one here and I'm going to unhide fields and for that I have to just tick them back in here and back they come in the original position. We can also freeze one or more columns if I right click on that column here and then just click freeze fields. It now moves that one fully to the left and when I scroll across obviously that one stays in place here. Let's just unfreeze all fields and let's move that back to its original position. If I want to freeze a number of columns at once I highlight all of them and then freeze fields. And now those three will stay in place when I scroll. And tabbing works in exactly the same way except that movement doesn't occur until we actually move off the screen there. And we can use arrow keys as well. So what we're trying to do is to replicate all of that. Let's close that. At the moment then, none of the columns on here are frozen. I've got a combo box here I can use to alter that. As you can see, I've got an ordinary scroll bar here, which allows the, the continuous form to scroll down. I could, when I've got no frozen columns, use an ordinary scroll bar here, but this is actually an ActiveX scroll bar used because I can then apply code to it. Just to make it clear, this is a single form. If I just right click on here, you will see this is a single form on here. I'll explain that grey shading in a minute there. But there is no splits, no trickery, just one form being used. Let's change back to form view. At the moment then, if I scroll across, 
all the columns just disappear across and they would do if I tabbed that as well. Let's now change this so I have one frozen column. I want to do so, that first column then is now shaded grey to distinguish it and when I scroll across you can see that that stays in place. Let's make it a little bit more obvious by shading in or rather freezing and therefore shading in the first three columns here. Now although they're frozen then those just like the rest of the form are still editable. It's not a read-only form in any sense at all. Anything can be altered, deleted and so on. You might say if I'm going to freeze certain columns I want those to be protected against editing so I can lock those columns as well. Now if I click on those nothing happens whereas I could change that or any other column that isn't frozen. I can change the number of columns. Maximum I've chosen to do here is the first eight. Now because they are locked as well, all of those are now non-editable. Let's change it back to three. And now let's show you what happens as we tap across. As you can see, it's behaving just like a datasheet form. I'm now using arrow keys in the same way. I can use the down key, I can use the up key, I can use left, I can use right, I can use shift and tab, anything exactly as in a data sheet here. And you'll notice though that when I did this or when I use the scroll bar then you can see only acts on the unfrozen columns. When I change the number of columns that are frozen you'll notice that the position of the scroll bar shifts across to the first unfrozen column there. And as already mentioned I can as before filter and I can also sort columns as well if I wish to. I clearly already had a filter on there that I forgot how to put in here. Let's clear both of those. So how does the code work? Well, I'm not going to be able to show you all of this. It would take far too long for the length of this video. I'm going to focus on the main things here. The first thing to say is, when we go to Design View, if I click on Properties, you'll see there are absolutely no events for that field or any other of the controls here. No event procedures whatsoever. Similarly, when I click on the Labels, none of them have got event procedures. The only procedures we have on the form are for the combo box and the lock frozen columns combo box here. We've got after update events there and for the form itself we have various events. We'll look at some of those. Let's start off with the form open event. Now the form open event does two things. One is it creates a dictionary, as I showed you in a previous video, to store the names and the left and width data for all of the controls in the detail section, text boxes in this case, and for the associated labels in the header that are actually not directly linked in any way, but they are what we recognize as being associated with them. And we also then set up an array list in order to actually store that information in order by left position as well. So both of those two require references if you use early binding, but if you're using late binding, then you don't need any additional references whatsoever. So the form at load, sorry, the form open event then sets up the dictionary and the array list. The form load event there are various things in there to do with the combo box and form captions and so on. But the most important thing is it sets up a class module code to work with this form. And that is why we've got no control events because everything that actually governs how this form operates runs from these various class modules. The most important of which is the CLS form, the form event. Now this code is based on code by APR Pillai 
for use for streamlining code in form events and you can find his code on his website MS Access Tips and there's a whole series of articles about reusing form module code and you can see the link is also in my article this will allow me to simplify significantly the code and prevent lots of repetitive coding in the form itself so we set up then code for the form we initiate the form and then we can tell that to run event procedures on specific events for each of the controls that we want to act upon and those controls are the header labels and also the controls in the details section whose name we get from the label and we do that because we've got similar patterns in the labels and in the controls we could use the position we could use the, the caption in the label I've chosen to use the name and basically what this does is then it chooses for any of the controls that you like to get into in a Continu continuous form. I've just got text boxes, but you could also have combo boxes or check boxes. And it tells that then to set up a control, a class based control for this, and then to run an event procedure on the enter event and the key down event. And basically, that governs everything. As soon as you come out of the form, it clears the collection that, that governs that. So for the text boxes then, we have this simple bit of code. For the key down event, it looks for the previous control to the one that you actually have moved the mouse down on at that particular time. So you've got the active control name and the code that you're actually using there. And from that, it then finds the previous control to that. For the enter event, it checks to see whether the column is frozen or not, and it basically will set with the first unfrozen column and then treat that in a different way to the frozen columns. You get exactly the same code for combo boxes if you use them, and exactly the same code for check boxes if you use them. I haven't here, but it works in exactly the same way. I'd like to also call out my Spanish developer friend Zevi Battle who suggested the use of this code to actually help this to work and it simplified significantly the coding of this whole application. So coming back to our form then, the form load event then sets up the class module code and it basically says while the form is running, run event procedures in the key down event and also in the enter event for each of the controls. As well as that, then it will assign the scroll bar value. If what that actually means is it determines where that scroll bar is, depending on what you've actually done. It also determines to show or not show all columns, and it also determines to paint the columns depending on whether they're locked or not. And if I just show you the paint columns code briefly, you can see then that in the paint frozen columns it looks at the array list, it counts which column you're at, determines whether a column is frozen or not. If the column is less than the column number is less than the number of frozen columns then it will shade the backing grey. If the column is also frozen, uh, sorry, is locked, I mean, then it will co color the text red in the same way. Otherwise, it will shade it gray. For all columns that are not frozen, it shades the back, back color white and the color of the text just dark gray, standard there. The only change, the difference to that is it will look to see if columns are, are actually filtered or sorted, and in which case it will colour those yellow or pale green uh, according to which you've done. So that's painting the columns there, and the set previous control, this then looks to see what action you're taking and whether you are tabbing or whether you're using arrow keys or whether you're using the scroll bar. The, set un the first unfrozen column looks to see the number of columns that are frozen, the, the number of the column in the order from the array list, and whether or not it is frozen from that. Show all columns then will allow you to determine what columns are actually visible on the screen at any time, depending on the position of the scroll bar and so on. That's basically how the form works. Obviously it needs 
much more explanation to to appreciate that fully please read my article in detail which explains the code and also the comments in the code that explain this in more detail and if we come out of this and back to our presentation then just to summarize then when the form is opened a dictionary is created to store the names and positions of all the controls and their associated header labels we also create an array list which is used to store the column order and we do that in order to actually determine whether or not a particular column is frozen compared to the number of columns that are set to be frozen in the combo box. We use an ActiveX scroll bar in order to horizontally scroll non-frozen columns. We do that because we can apply code to that scroll bar. No APIs are used anywhere in this application. It works in 64-bit and 32-bit with no changes needed. If you use late binding, which I recommend, no additional references are required. If you do want to use early binding, then you need two references that are explained in the article. Class module code controls the behavior of the form controls. There are absolutely no form control events for the for the header labels or for the for the controls in the detail section. We use various procedures to manage navigation using tab, shift tab, or arrow keys. Between those, it works in exactly the same way as a datasheet form. As well as this method of managing the columns in a very wide continuous form and demonstrating other videos, already created one on hiding and restoring selected columns, which you can look at now, and coming soon is one on moving and resizing columns. All the same functionality as you get in datasheet forms. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. As always, if you found it useful, please add a like and leave a comment. Suggest topics for future videos in this series. Subscribe and then you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.